no place better to be than in Jesus' presence. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Yes. That actually means a large group of people. You say, well, how big is large? Well, I don't think he's concentrated on the number, but some people have tried to say, well, I got together, me and my dog, and we had church. Well, you know, you and your dog is probably not what he had in his mind. Well, I know it's not what he had in his mind when you look at the Greek and the Hebrew when he's talking about assembly. And uh, it's actually a body of people that's came together for one purpose, one one motive, and that is to disciple and bring Jesus to the world. Amen. Amen. And so we need to make sure we're connected in those places. He said, "How he, you know, a lot of people said, you'll know, he said, how will I know they're my disciples? They'll know them because they love me and they follow me. Amen. And so many people say they love him and follow him, but they put everything else in front of him. Come on. Yes. Come on now. Yeah. Hey, listen, he said, go and disciple my people. This is called discipling. It's called teaching. It's called instructing you from how we live, how I'm living, how I'm following Jesus, and for you all to follow Jesus. Amen? Yes. And God wants you to disciple people. Can I get an amen? Yes, amen. And so, but in order to do that, today, everybody looks as, at everything as from a consumerist uh, viewpoint. Just like that cute little video said. Amen? We, we look at everything as something we're going to purchase and what can I get out of it. Never what can I give, never what even what can they teach me because nobody wants to be taught. Mm -hmm. They just want to be blessed their socks off. Mm -hmm. Come on. And one of the things that, that a real disciple will learn is if you really love Jesus, you're, you're going to come, you're going to be a community and a church and you're going to be faithful to that church because that's what a real love affair is. Not because you always feel like it, but because you have a covenant relationship with your, your Creator and, and, and His Son, Jesus Christ. And so you love Him, so you want to do those things because He instructed you, because He knows what's best for you, and He realized how much that will bless you. Amen? Yes. I mean, if everybody was honest, there's probably been, especially the faithful core that come on every Wednesday, nothing against somebody. If you got to work, I'm not picking out people. That's the devil doing that. I'll let him jump on your doorstep. But you would say, there's a lot, but quite a few Wednesday nights when you just really didn't feel like coming. If you had your way, you would have climbed up in the recliner and kicked it back if you had one of those and, and took a siesta, you know, or... And, uh, or turned on the, the boob tube and seen what was on it, you know. That, that is probably what you felt like. And if you, you said there's never been that time, I'd call you a liar. But what kept you coming is that you knew the, what the Word of God said, and you knew how much, you, you knew no matter how you were feeling, you would feel better after you obeyed the Word because He sets before you blessings and curses, and you choose to be blessed. And there's been there. I mean, I know I've told this before. There was times I look back now and I see how some people. I see why people said things that they did. But I would work like a 16-hour shift, and I'd only make like the last 15 or 20 minutes of church sometimes. And that was after working a 12 or 16-hour shift, driving 30 minutes back to 45 minutes back, coming into church sometimes. It, it, it depending on what job I was working that day, sometimes dirty. I had some gentlemen. They said, "Can't you change clothes before?" I understood their hearts. I had, if I had, especially had mud all over my boots, but if I if I would have tried to time to change the boots, I would have missed the service altogether. I would not even got that. And do you know those times that I went, God ministered to me so strong that it was I, I couldn't tell you what was said or done. And sometimes though, it was, there was other times where I came and I'd get there like 30 minutes later and I'd be snoring before I ever got there because I'd been up since four or three o'clock that morning. I'd run a jackhammer all day. I was exhausted and people wanted to go off on me. They thought I was being disrespectful. And I guess in some ways I might feel the same way. But luckily I had a pastor who said, you, don't you dare mess with that boy. If you, if, when you work 16 hours and you still drive for 45 minutes and you still make an effort to come to church then you can talk to me. Some of you all have a hard enough time coming here when it's, when it's any kind of inconvenience to you at all. And uh, 
But you know what? I, there was lots of times I couldn't tell you what was preached. I couldn't have. I, I didn't feel the anointing real strong. But you know what happened when I'd wake up the next morning? My spirit man would be rejuvenated because I, I obeyed the word of God. And there was a couple. You say, how do you know that? Well, there was a couple times that the devil won when I was a real baby Christian. And I, and I, I mean, I had every right. It wasn't like I could make church on time. I was only making 20 minutes. I mean, I bought into all the lies and the justification, and most people would have. And I went ahead and went home because I was tired. Guess what? I woke up even more tired the next morning. I woke up even more exhausted. And I, I, it, I wasn't a rocket science, but it didn't take me very long to figure out. No matter how tired I was, when I went to church, God obeyed it, and somehow I woke up feeling better the next morning. Why was that? Because that's what disciples do. Come on. We have a guest speaker tonight, I think, but I do have something in my spirit I feel like sharing, in case you haven't noticed. Big smile. So, turn in your Bible to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I, I have taught Bible studies all over the world in this verse. It's one of my favorite verses. But, like anything, it can lose its... Uh, It can lose its power sometimes because it becomes secondhand notice to you. Can anybody read this big sign that we have in our church that stays in the front? Can anybody read what that says? It says, Go make disciples of all the nations. Yeah, Matthew 28 19. Now, when you read your King James Version, what does verse 19 say? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, how did I get, how did I get teach to disciple? Anybody wonder? Because that's what teaching is, and that's what discipling is. And you can't teach something you don't know. You ever? I mean, there's there's some people that try. I've had a few teachers that tried to teach something from them reading their book, and they weren't no, they weren't a very good teacher. And discipling someone means you're you're transferring revelation. You're transferring rhema that you have into them. This is knowledge that you know without a shadow of a doubt. Kind of like, you know, you all coming on Wednesday night. Nobody's going to talk you out of it. Nobody's going to change your mind. And whenever you get a chance, you're going to speak that into someone's life. And you'll tell them, yeah, you won't feel like it a few times. And there'll be some things. But let me tell you, if you'll show up, God will meet you. Kind of like paying your tithes, some of you that's here. I, I, listen, these are simple little things I'm grabbing out of thin air tonight. Come on, I'm not on anybody. If that's somebody, that's the Holy Ghost. But you'll say, hey, listen, I, I struggled with it, but let me teach you what I learned. Let me show you how God do it, God, how good God has been to me. Amen. Yes. That is real talk. That is real discipleship. Now, for years, I'm not knocking on these, but for years, we had all the people that knew how to put on the, all the great show. But then you would get disheartened because they would get knocked off their high horse and you would think, well, man, if they did that, I can't, you know. But we just need real people that have really been through some things that know how to teach other people. But guess what that means you have to have? Contact with messed up people that need your information. Big smile. And you'll say, well, I don't know about that. Well, guess what? Somebody shared it with you when you were a messed up person. Somebody discipled you when you were a mess. Somebody shared what they know. And sometimes you think, well, I don't know nothing, God. What good am I? But you knew enough to get here, didn't you? Well, then you know enough to get that to somebody else. You know, it, I've tried to, I really, I broke, I, I really, I, I'm at an unfair disadvantage tonight because the verses I'm doing, I've broke them down so much over the years. I can tell them to you front ones and backwards and every meaning and everything. But you know the funny thing is with every translation, every, every way I've looked at that word go, it only means one thing. Go. It means action. It means if you're not actually doing something, to, and, and the word make, that means in a process. 
So you're in a process teaching someone to be more like Christ while you yourself are in the process while somebody's teaching you. But it's an action work. Now, do you think that a consumerist environment is one that is geared towards making disciples? But how many can see where America has bought into it? The enemy's worked overtime. We, and we don't even hardly make anything in this country anymore, even products-wise. It's all made overseas, including Christians. And they're starting to send some missionaries here. After we were the country that sent missionaries everywhere. Because we've turned into a consumerist society, a consumerist church. Lord, I need you more today than yesterday. Oh, Lord, send your glory so I can feel good about myself. Oh, Lord, bless me. Oh, touch me. Oh, man. I'm going, yay, I'm going through the valley. I better run and go find whoever that was that was discipling me so they can tell me how to do this. Then I'll share somebody. Oh, the blessings are so good today. Then somebody comes along and tells you that faith is not a feeling. You're going to have to grow up. And they don't like that, so then they go find someplace else that feeds all their needs. Come on. You say, Pastor, we're here tonight. Talk to somebody else. Well, I just got one question for you. I've got my disciples. Big smile. I bet you can finish the rest of that thought, can't you? Where are yours? See, I didn't even have to say it. Now that, that, listen church, that's not enough tonight. I, I really feel like I'm sharing the Father, so I want to encourage you. I understand that it's intimidating. I understand that most of you think you ain't got your act together enough to share anything. And I just want to tell you that's a lie. If you got your act enough together to be here, you got enough to your act together enough to share what what, what you had with Jesus. The apostles, were, one man was looking, and everybody's looking for the handout. Everybody's looking for something. They said, "Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you." They didn't say, "Let's have a gimmick and, and give away big screen TVs to pack the church." Listen, if the if the apostles, come on. The apostles weren't paupers, but they also, because the church took care of them. Did you know that? That's why the Bible said they sold land, they did all these things, they, so, they, so they maintained their ministries. The Bible talks about it in detail, honestly. But they, they, they weren't filthy rich going around throwing money to take care of everyone's problem. They were, they were giving faith. Because see, you know, there's an old, old saying that says you can, you, can, you can keep buying a man a fish or you can teach him how to fish. And he'll take care of himself. See, I can keep. I, I can all. I could just be like we. We can have a consumerist environment church here, where I keep praying for you, and I keep patching your boo boos, and I keep praying for you to get healed, and praying for every crisis you go through. Or I can disciple you and teach you to be men and women of God that stands up on your own two legs, which I do around here, so that you have faith. To deal with. See, so I, don't, I don't have the money to bail you out every time you, you need something. Although that is what most people look to the church for anymore. They come, they only show up when they need something. Pay my electric bill, buy my groceries, pay my rent. And I'll say, silver and gold have I not. What I have, I'll give it to you. And I'll teach you faith if you'll come. And you know what? There has been a few that said, all right, Pastor. And you know what's happened? They've drastically changed their life. But you know, it's not just my job to do that. Amen. You say, why are you on this? Well, I don't know. Ask the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So he said, go and teach. In verse, verse 19, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, verse, verse 18, in heaven and in earth. Now, why do you think he's telling them this? You realize he's not sending you out powerless? He's 
all power. Go in the Holy Spirit. All power. Look, look, look at your neighbor and say, all power. All power. Now the enemy, there's a reason why when you start getting activated in your faith that the enemy attacks you. When you start discipling somebody. Because he doesn't ever want to click that you've got all power. Why? Because the Son of the living God is living inside you. He sent the Holy Ghost which has filled you if your spirit filled. And you have all power inside you to activate. Why? He says signs and wonders are for the unbelievers. Now, if you become a consumerist society and you're not discipling people, guess what? That stuff don't hang around that long. Can you see that right here? Because he said, he said, all powers, what, what is the power for? To go and make disciples. To go and teach people. When you, if you'll be about your, his, your father's business, he'll be about your business is what he's saying. Come on. Go with you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. And so he's telling us to baptize them and get them full of the Holy Ghost. How many know you can't do that if you're putting them in the back room? I'm still, I'm, I'm wanting some shirts made or something someday that says, Broken Chains Church, Unashamedly Spirit Fit. Because I, I, I am tired of the Holy Ghost being hidden. And so should you be. Now, listen, I grew up in the age when it wasn't cool to be spirit-filled. It's kind of cool now. It's kind of hip in some, some ways. In some areas, how some people have done it. But when I was growing up, it wasn't cool. If, you, if you found, they found out you was one of those tongue-talking, holy rolling Pentecostals, you was the laughing stock of school. I mean, everybody was making fun of you. And so, but see what happened is the church let, let themselves get intimidated so much by that thing, that consumerist environment, instead of it changing the world, they let the world change them. And Jesus told us what to do. Go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know what happens when somebody gets baptized in the Holy Ghost? It's messy. There's, whoa, fire. You know, things start shouting. Whoa, glory. Things start falling off. He shows up. The power comes. Do you know that's what he wants to happen today? You know, when Compassion Ministries is on the street, he wants to have a Holy Ghost blowout right there when somebody gets saved. He wants them to get filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants them to start cutting the jig when they get free from all that stuff. You know, you ever see anybody that was bound in chains and then gets unbound? That's what happened. I've seen it so many times. That's what he wants us to bring to people. Luke 4, 18 says, I've come to set the captives free. I came to heal the brokenhearted. I came to, I came to give liberty to them that are bruised. This is what he's telling us to go and do. But see, when we, we get wrapped, listen, I'm there. there there's some things I, I'm wrestling with. And, you know, there's some days I stand in faith better than other days, you know. Just being, not that I'll stand in faith, please don't misquote me. Are you with me? But the enemy doesn't want you to realize what you got. He, he definitely doesn't want you to make disciples. Amen. So he wants to keep you wrapped up in your circle you're in. A circle of whatever it is you're dealing with. Because see, when you break out of that circle and you start giving to others, listen, there's, then the power starts flowing through you. And that power storm will not only will minister to the ones you're discipling, it will minister to you. Come on, are you with me? There's been times when the Holy Ghost has started flowing. He's about to, he wants to minister to the church. I started getting excited because guess what? He's got to go through me before he gets to you all. Woo! Lord, that means I get some too. And guess what? He wants to do the same with you. Did you know that? He wants to do the same with you. He wants little fire chambers all over Springfield. I would use fire starters, but it's been really overused in times past to turn to a religious term. But I just fire chambers, little, little pots that are just on fire for God that have figured out who they are. That you know, I'm not talking about super Christians. I'm not talking about super fakers. I'm talking about people that's been discipled, that's been through some things, that's tried the Word of God, found it to be true, and are still standing and saying, listen, I don't know it all, but let me tell you what I know. 
Let me tell you about a man named Jesus who saved me, set me free, delivered me. Let me tell you when my world was upside down, he's never left me hanging. He's never left me starving. Even when I thought I was going to lose everything, he's never let me lose anything because I've always had him. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus who's always seen me through. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus who gives me peace. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus who always gives me joy even when I don't feel like it. Listen, I can't tell you how to solve every problem, but I can tell you who solved all mine. And his name is Jesus. And then, listen, when we start doing that, something will start shifting inside you. And all those circumstances will start just crashing around you, not in a bad way, in a good way. But I can't make you go. I, I was guilty for years. I, I used cattle projects trying to try to get people to go. I mean, I shook them. I, I, I gave them, you know. But I can't make you go. And, and I was real happy that some have went, but I want to say there's more when you're going. We have to we have to really expect God to come and move. And He wants to start in you. And the enemy has really worked over time in convincing you that, hey, well, He ain't never going to move through me. He may move through pastor some Sundays, but that's really what God feels like. And that's a lie. God wants to move every Sunday. God wants to move every service. He wants to move every... The Holy Ghost wants to show up every day of the week. He wants to show himself strong across the land. Amen? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatever things they feel like. Is that what it says? But is that not what we see? Let's just be honest. Can we just be honest tonight for a little while? It's Bible study. How many people do you get in a, in a, in a if you were an argument type, but how many people are just confronted by you every day because they don't like what something the Word of God has to say, so they've got a different viewpoint. They really don't care what the Bible has to say because they're going to do it their way. How many, how many front run into a, 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 a daily basis? Yeah? Now, if some of you are honest, how many can say that used to be you? Yes. Amen. And so, but he tells us to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now, here's the hard part about making disciples. You can't make something you're not. Lots of people can tell you all of it. I mean, I, I, I used to this one dad. Bless his heart. He, uh, he always tells his kids, do what I tell you, not what I do. I'm trying to help you. And guess what? His kids turned out doing just what he did, not what he said. Big surprise. A lot of people just because they, they're, they're saying all the right things that they're really helping make disciples. But it's not what you're saying that matters, it's what you're doing that matters. Right. Come on. And do you know that you're teaching, you're discipling every day, whether you want to or not? What you're discipling, what you're teaching, is up to you. But you're teaching those around you something every day. Every day you're teaching them something. You might even be teaching them how to whine real good. Yeah. How, to, how to have a pity party. I don't know. How to complain about that unfair justice you got done by the boss. How, 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 how bad our government stinks. I'll leave that on before I get strung out of here. Maybe some people drive, we watch online and I'm driving up there. That's it. That's cool. But in teaching them to observe all things. That means teaching them to obey. Teaching them to, to take notice of. That means it has to be something that you've made important in your life. It's amazing so many people to me. The Bible says train, to train up your, your, your children the way they should go and they're older, older they will not depart from it. 
Well, they think, and they think because they sent them on the church best or they told them something that they trained them up. They didn't train them up. Their kids are going to do exactly what you did. Whatever's important to you is going to be important to them. And so much later in life, they come up and they say, well, I tried my best. Well, they, they're only observing what you observed. And when you, we speak as plain as I do, sometimes people don't like it. And listen, I don't mean it ugly, and I don't. I, I really don't speak always that plain unless the Holy Ghost tells me. If He tells me, it's because He's trying. He loves them enough. He's trying to shock them into, into seeing the mirror, so they can get free. Not because He's trying to beat on them, because that's not the Father's heart. Amen. So, teaching us to observe all things. What's your after man? You lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, I can do a couple things here with this, but. Aren't you so good glad that whenever you choose to do these things, no matter the opposition, that Jesus promised to be with you? He, you know, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But he said, Listen, if you will do the if you will go and you will make disciples. Now listen, he didn't just say if you want to go and hang out and tell everybody just what, you know, how, how good my glory is. And there's nothing wrong with his glory. Please don't misquote me, but he said, if you'll go and make disciples, I'll be with you. No matter what you do, where you go through, what comes at you, I'll be with you to the end. No matter what the world's looking like, no matter what, what, what's coming at the world, no matter what's going on, what destruction's coming, no matter what, what, what I'm dealing with, if you'll go and make disciples, if you'll go and show people who I really am, if you'll teach them to observe me, I will be with you no matter what comes at you. Now, what a promise. Come on, what a promise. In the world we live in, when the enemy is constantly trying to steal our peace, constantly trying to get us to become upset and worried and frightful over issues, you really, you know, some people say, well, that's a formula then, Pastor, if I'll just do that. Well, not if you do it with the wrong heart. You do it because you love it. You do it because you experience the good. That's why the Bible says it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. And when you've experienced something that good, it just comes out of you and other people observe it. I can't tell you how many people where I used to be from, they're like, man, if God can do that with Brian, anything's possible. I mean, I even like him now. <laughs> no, they always said I was a likable guy. And that word nations there, before I get ahead, I just want to throw this out, out there. Because so many times we, we think we nations. I don't know how many people, that they always come to me. Pastor, I feel I have a calling for the missionary field. Or, well, it's always some big exotic thing. And they have no clue what they're asking. They have no idea how hard it is. And if you can't, if you can't wash toilets at your home church, you sure ain't going to make it starving on the mission field and have to believe by faith. I mean, you just ain't. I mean, just get over it right now. Sorry, I'm just being that straight. It just ain't going to work. Because if God can't train you up there, He sure ain't going to make it there. They always come to me and they got all these things. And that, but that word nations actually means people group. And so and the Bible said uh, over Acts chapter 1, it said uh, first, in Jude, first in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then the uttermost part of the earth. So that means start in your own backyard and then go into the next neighboring cities, the next neighboring cities, and then God, you know, that's how God works. He has decently in order. Anybody ever recognize that verse, you know? <laughs> so he's like, hey, if you can minister to the people right in your own backyard that actually know you, and they know they didn't used to like you very much, but they can see what your disciple and you have done, and you can love on them and win them to Christ, then we'll talk about going a little bit further out in the city. Big smile. Come on, are you with me? Yes. And then he keeps going and going and going until he sends you to the cornfields. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you learn to love them. Disciple them. Turn to uh, Mark chapter 16 real quick tonight. Mark 16. Verse 15. Can you bring my bottle of water, Pastor Tim, please? It's right beside you. Mark 16, verse 15. Anybody want to read that for me? And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord has Alright, go ye. Now, 
you know, there is a biblical there is a biblical foundation to the one that stays is the same as the one that goes. But I want to tell you, I've seen a whole lot more people buying into the staying part than the going part. And if it's supposed to be uh, your own backyard going, how many know you can, nobody else can do that for you but you? And you notice when you, when you, if I say go you, just take a, take a finger and, and point it at yourself like it's a mirror and say go you. Go you. Now, there's only one person they can be talking to. Do you see that? There's nobody else he's trying to tell to go here. But when you read it, you, it should be a revelation. He's talking to me. Jesus is talking. The Son of the living God is talking to me. He's telling me to go. And you know, and that should excite you. That the Son of the living God is talking to you. He, and he is, even right. He said, listen, you know, and everybody everybody loves to sing those songs. Oh Lord, here am I, send me. And they're always thinking about some exotic thing and doing all these great things for God. And God said, Go and take care of the nursery. Go change the diapers. Go clean the toilets. And he said, But God, here am I, send me. And he said, I did. You didn't go. <laughs> Into all the world. Everybody everybody says, oh, man, into all the world. Yes. Well, that into all the world actually is the exact same translation he's talking about over in Acts 1 8, where he's talking about first in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of it. He said, first go start in your own backyard. And we'll talk after that. And preach the gospel to every creature. Now, the gospel is what? The good news. So, one he told us to teach, another he told us to preach. And you'll say, well, that's two different things. Well, it's the same thing, but there is a calling to preach. Everyone's called to disciple, okay? And there is a calling. Everyone's called to preach. Preach means you just go, you just go and tell everybody how good Jesus is and how good he's been to you. So everybody you come in contact with, you go and tell them just how good Jesus is. And then when someone takes the bait, because he's made you fishers of men, then we start teaching and discipling them. Because so many people say, well, Lord, I've went, I've tried to disciple, I couldn't find anyone. And he said, well, how many have you preached to? Well, Lord, I haven't really found anybody that sit by, that really was my was like me, that I thought I could disciple. Huh. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, every creature. Every creature. That's everyone. He didn't, he didn't care if you liked them or not. He didn't care if they if they met up with your standard. He didn't care if they, they had your smell. He didn't care if they if they if, what color their skin was. He really don't care. He said, Go tell everybody how good I am. And those that take the bait, then disciple them. Now, we've all talked about being do-gooders, showing love. Now, can be I've never seen hatefulness and ugliness win anybody to Christ for the record. Not one time. Now, that, that doesn't mean we're not human. That doesn't mean we don't have conflicts. But how many of the Bible is even full of the Word of God and how to deal with conflicts? And if you deal with the biblical resol resol resolution, sorry, then... I've seen God use that. I, I can't tell you how many times as a man of God where there's been things that's been done wrong that I've had to say, hey, listen, you're, you're trying to steal from me here. You know, I love you, but let me call you on this. And they end up getting saved and going to church later on or having respect with me. Or, and and they, some of those people are some of my most valid uh, defenders now. They won't let anybody else take advantage of me after they got caught. <laughs> And, and that the truth is, is those aren't those aren't made up stories, but we did it the right way. So, you know, he wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, everybody here, if they were real honest, they would say, "Yeah, but I get busy with life, Pastor. Life just happens." But we do have some awesome ministries that make it a purpose to go where it's going to be a purpose-driven thing. 
not that I'm a fan of purpose driven material, but it's purpose driven. It has one we we have ministries that have one focus to go and do this. And we provide a form. I would encourage you to go to them sometime. But the thing is, is you don't have to. There's people around you every day whose life is falling apart, who are completely hopeless, who are completely helpless. And you have the good news. You have the medicine they need. And if you don't proclaim it to them, who will? If it's not now, then who? You say, well, I've been doing it, Pastor. Well, good, keep encouraging. Because some of the things you're needing, come on, listen close to me, church. Some of the breakthroughs you're needing, I'll say it, some of the breakthroughs you're needing are going to come when you really start giving unto others, even to your own hurt. When you start ministering to others, even your own, I'm not always talking about giving your last dollar. I'm talking about giving even maybe even your last ounce of compassion. Your last, your, when you're feeling like, I just wish somebody would come love on me, God, and you go love on them instead. Come on, I'm preaching tonight, church. That's what He's calling us to be in these last days. And some of you, some of that breakthrough you're needing is going to come when you do that. You say, how do you know that, preacher? Well, just follow me around for a few days. I promise you'll figure it out. Big smile. Never thought I'd say that same, but I guess it was for time. And he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, how many believe that? What color is that first? Who's speaking? Now, God's a God of love. He's not going to send anybody to hell. So there's really no sense in us getting all worked up on this discipleship stuff, right? I mean, He loves us. I mean, come on. He lo God loves me. I know that's what you think, but let me tell you what I think. Now, I promise you, if you start sharing and making disciples, these are things you're going to hear 24-7. But the truth is, is Jesus spoke here. He said either they're going to proclaim me and be saved, or they're not going to believe and they're going to be they're going to be damned. And how do you know? How did we? He start. He said, "How do you know if they're His? Because we love Him, we keep His commandments, we make Him a priority." And I've had so many people say, "Well, you don't know me. You don't know my heart." Well, no, but I know your fruit. And I love you enough to say your fruit stinketh. Now let's change some things. Come on, let's just be real. Anybody here ever try to teach somebody something? All right. Um, Pastor Tammy, come on up here. I need you to take that bottle and I need you to turn it upside down. And I need you to turn it right side up. Now open it up. Now put the lid back on. Now let me see it. Now, that was real good instruction. That was real good teaching. She followed right along. That, but this is how it usually goes. Now do what I did. You know, that's more uh, discipleship than what you think. And he said, go and make disciples. And, and people are watching what you're doing with your life. They're watching what's important to you. And I'm telling you, breakthrough is connected to your discipleship, your discipling is connected to doing the Word of God. The Bible says, if you'll do these things, I'll go with you. Now, am I saying that God's not with you? That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you, there's some power that He wants to flow through you in these last days. And He's looking for people. You say, well, I've been going. Good. Then you've, maybe you're facing some opposition. Maybe the enemy's raised, felt like he's raised the stakes. And maybe you've got tired and wore down. I'm telling you, go ahead and double down. Because the Word of God is true. It's yes and amen. Amen, yes. Come on. I I'm preaching tonight. Go ahead and just double down and say, you know what? You know, and, and there was a time period that I did this. You know, 
I, I'm just going to be real honest tonight. I, I, I pray you all are mature enough to do it. There's times when I'm dealing with some health issues. I think, Lord, you want me to get up and pray for people? Uh, and the enemy will come, who are you to pray for them? You're sick yourself. What do you think is going to happen? And I have to go back and say, you know what? You, God, you said that you'd be with me. You said you gave me all power. I, I, know, I know what I'm standing in faith for. And I'm not backing off. Number one devil, shut up your liar. And i got to deal with him. And then I... Then I come on over here, and the Bible says that the, the call for the elders of the church and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now, did I write that? No. no. So it's not on me to watch over and perform it, is it? It's the Word of God, and He will do what He said. Right? And guess how many people I've seen healed and delivered because I didn't, I didn't, let, I didn't, let, I didn't let myself get in the way. But guess what happens each one sometimes somebody else gets ministered to? Who gets to watch that? Me. Who gets encouraged out of it? Me. Yeah, so would you. Are you starting to get a revelation tonight a little bit? I'm going, I'm going a little fast. But God wants you to go about being he, he Jesus, you know, he said they, they came to try to get him to do something. He said, I gotta be about my father's business. I know Brian will play that video before we leave tonight one more time. Because I'm telling you, and I know some most of y'all here have changed your mindsets. I realize we don't have the community community yeah, whatever. The consumer mindset anymore around here. But I am telling you the Bible says, Do not grow weary in well doing, for in due season you shall reap. And I'm telling you that that it works. And some of the very things he's hitting you on is just because he wants you to shut your mouth because your blessing's in your mouth. And your blessing's coming when you're blessing others. When you're sharing the gospel. When you're discipling people. When you're really living it out. And he's trying to... The only person that can curse at you. Are you with me tonight? So... But... I, I went past this a little fast. It's already 8 o'clock. Oh my. But you, how, listen, if you, how many believe that those that really believe and follow God are going to be saved and really make Him Lord of life? How many believe that there's going to be people that are going to be damned to hell? Now, if you really believe that and you love people, wouldn't you do anything in your power to try to save them? I mean, if you just took a moment tonight and you stopped and thought about some people that you, I mean, they, they, they might even be pay, playing a really good game with everybody else. But you know in their heart they're, they are not lining up with the Word. You know their fruit's not there. You, you know, number one, so many people want to tell me, well, you know, I, listen, I don't know their heart. But I can tell you if it's not a priority enough to really go to church, if it's not a priority enough to live according to the Word of God, then God's not number one in their life. And 99% of the time they're going to split hell wide open. I'm just telling you. Well, how do I know that? Because, listen, whenever he tied all that together, he was talking about forsaking not to assemble yourselves together. He was talking about all these things. All in those scriptures. And if you love somebody, you would spend time with them. I'm going to clarify because I've seen some things come up in the scripture. Listen, if you love somebody, you're, you're going to spend some time with them. You're going to, and not only that, you're going to belong to a community that has a, that, that, that's a church, that's a body that has a purpose that's doing something for the Lord. Are you with me tonight? Do you, do you hear me? And, and so, you know, I have family members that I love that some of them, they, they play church. But I know if they die tonight, that not more than likely they're going to split hell wide open. But it's easier to say, well, I don't know, because see, that relieves you the responsibility of having to reach them and disciple them. Come on, are you, I'm, I'm preaching real straight tonight. Are you with me? Yes. And I believe it's time, church, that we start reaching those. So, you know, can I, can I tell you this? Do you know, how, are, are there is there fruit lining up with the Word of God? Sometimes it's just as hard to believe. Remember that first time when you started maybe coming around here or coming other places? You know, I, 
I know a lot of you, when you really had to start looking in the mirror and how hard that was and let God change you, I want to challenge you tonight that sometimes this is just as hard. When you really, look, I'm not talking about judging them. I'm not talking about being ugly with them. Are y'all hearing the pastor's heart tonight? I'm talking about really looking at their fruit and say, man, are they lining up with the Word of God? Are they going to make heaven? If you're, if you're unsure, then you better start doing something to change that. If not you, who? If not now, when? You say, well, I've tried everything. Well, then keep living it out in front of them. Keep showing them. But don't, don't ever condone them. The, I, I've met so many people, they, they want to be, listen, you are that way. You think they're not? They want to be condoned in their sin. They, you know, that, that's why there's a lot of uh, false religions because people will go do religious things because they want to feel good that they're going to make heaven, but they still want to do whatever they want to do. So if not us, then who? If not now, when? Right? But I want to go on to the next part. But that's the one thing. When, I, when Years ago when I read this, he said most people really don't believe that, verse 16. That's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said if they did, they wouldn't be acting the way they're acting. And they think they have zero responsibility for what happens to people. You know, the Bible says as ministers that we get to heaven as, as, a, man, as a man of God, I'm going to have to answer for souls. I'm going to have to answer how people responded to things. And their blood could even be on my hands if I didn't act correct, if I didn't respond correctly. So, that's why sometimes I've got, I, I, I'm more, you know, I'm more concerned with getting you to heaven than hurting your feelings. Even though my intention is never to offend you. My intention is never to hurt you. Are you with me? Moving along real quick. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Did it, now, how do we know they believe? Because they're following the Word of God and they're really chasing after Him. Now, look at your neighbor. and do, do you believe tonight? Did you come here just because you wanted to feel good? No. Did you come here because you love Jesus? Yes. Do you believe His Word? Yes. Do you believe it's yes and amen? Yes. Amen. Then, then look at your neighbor and say, He's talking to me. He's talking to me. In my name they shall cast out devils. Now, has anybody here ever really dealt with a demonic force? Yeah. Now, I have lots of people that want to come see me when they start dealing with them because the first thing that comes is usually the spirit of fear because they don't know who they are in Christ. Or here's the next thing. I, 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 listen very closely to me. This is a real nugget for you. Here's the number one way that keeps the enemy from walking in power and authority dealing with demons. It's because the people know they really haven't been living right and they know they really haven't been believing and doing what the Word of God says. And so the enemy is able to come in and stop them right there. Their own conscience betrays them. Come on, are you hearing me? You say, how do I do that? Well, for number one, you get in 1 John 1 9 says, Faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and wash and clean from all unrighteous. You get it under the blood. Number two, you have to really be looking at your stuff to know. And if you then if your life's in order, when he comes, he'll always come. Listen, he, he always come. He's the accuser of the brethren. You say, hey, that's under the blood, John. Come on. And then the Bible says, then you, then you can walk with power. You can say, hey, God said He's given me all spiritual power to do with every demonic force. And right now I take authority over you and I just, listen, I, I've seen, I, I tell you how many kids I've seen over the last 10 years that's actually increased that's had demonic influences on them. And you know, I don't always have a, a big uh, Holy Ghost shouting thing at the front and lay hands on them and have them wiggling like snakes. And I, I've had a lot of it's happened that way. You know, sometimes I've just taken a kid by the hand and they've been manifested and I go, I'll deadlock with them and my spirit deadlocks. My spirit, I go in Jesus' name. And you know what? It'll be day and night change because that thing is gone. Why? Because power follows them that believe. And so do you have it. Now, listen, that's how disciples are made because all of a sudden people start realizing, man, there's something really to this stuff. Amen. But if you haven't really been believing, if you really haven't been living it, then you won't have you won't have enough uh, 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 confidence to really walk it out because you'll know you're not right. You might fool everybody else, but you won't fool yourself. Big smile. 
But I want to tell you, you can have confidence. You can have assurance. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to chase after Him. you got to quick to be repent. you got to look in the mirror. Come on. But I want to tell you, I really believe that's the number one thing that really keeps Christians from coming in this day and time, in this season, from really walking the power and authority of casting out demons. Because every time they start to, number one, maybe the enemy just comes to accuse them and they shut up. But, you know, he's always going to come to accuse you, but it only sticks when it's true. And you haven't put it under the blood. I'll just let that sink in. Come on, are you with me? Whenever he shows up at your house and he's trying to destroy relationships and marriage, and when it counts, you can't wait to go have a prayer fasting time then and spend some time with God. You kind of like already got to do that. Amen. When that spirit of infirmity shows up, you got to know, hey, listen, I'm in the right place with God. It's not going to. The Bible said He would rebuke the devourer for our sake. Amen. And there's reasons why the blessings of God are, are so much. He promises power to go with us to take care of all these things. But if you throw away your confidence, which is a great reward, you're going to be in a mess when that happens. That's another scripture you're going to get up sometime. Almost, almost done for the night. Get back on my stool so I'll stop preaching. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Honey, they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, I want to tell you well, a lot of things that I want to tell you. Number one is the Holy Ghost is awesome, and speaking in the Holy Ghost is one, one of the most awesome, mind blowing things you'll ever experience. And it will increase your faith like nobody's business when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And it'll also, even if they don't agree with it, it'll shake and it'll shake and wake any unbeliever you come in contact with, because they they won't understand. But I also want to tell you, people can learn it. There's been people that got filled with the Holy Ghost, and that they they, they they kept part of the, the dead language, but the Spirit of God departed a long time ago. And just because you can still speak in it doesn't mean it's flowing in. Following me. You say, where's the scripture for that, Pastor? It says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. But see, the anointing, your, your integrity in your life is what fuels that gift. That's a whole other message, but you all with me? You all follow the Pastor? But, and then they shall take up serpents. And, you know, and I've always hated that verse. I have. I don't like snakes. Anybody that knows me, I've overcame it through the power of God. I don't scream like a little girl no more and run away. You know, I used to tell people, if you chase me to the gardener stake, we're going to have even we're going to have a come to Jesus moment when we get done. And I had a few gentlemen in high school that tested me, and they had we had a moment, and they didn't like it. And, uh, but the truth is, is that means you know. I'm so thankful that that means Paul had enough sense to be afraid of snakes at one time in his life too. And Jesus here saying, "Listen, uh, snakes should scare most normal people, but if you really know who I am and my power, they're going to even even that deadly thing's not going to scare you." That does not mean we pass the snake basket around and test your faith. <laughs> but because it, you know, but when the enemy comes in. To destroy you, to snake bite you. How I many you know? Nothing wins. That that wins that wins disciples. That that trains people up. How, how many have ever seen somebody else walk through something? You think, man, that would destroy me. And you see him walk through it and keep the faith. Guess what you just did? If you're paying attention, you just learned how to walk through it. How, how to have to go through it. Amen. Well, when it does come. You, you don't know. It may have took them a few missteps to get on through it. You know how to just right step right on through that thing. Because you were a disciple. Amen? If they drink any deadly thing, if Pastor Timmy wants to poison me, it shall not hurt me. Amen? And if they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall... Recovered. 
cover. Now, what is this all for? What is it for? No, no really. What, what's it for? What's the purpose behind all these power gifts? Everybody likes to talk. Everybody likes to have a healing service, but who usually gets the glory out of it? The preacher, the church, every other thing they say they're having. Oh, let's go over to so and so. They're having a healing revival. I need to get my consumerism healing thing fixed. I'm just preaching real straight tonight. These things are to make disciples and win souls. Because when God shows up in a mighty way, they can't deny the power of God. And that is the fact that it's still for. That's why He He sends you into the highways and byways and compels them to come. But He doesn't send you out there powerless. Because if you, he, church, he wants to encourage you to start having faith lifted. So, you know, I understand everybody in here right now is under the pressure, but I want to tell you that if you'll start giving outside of that, I believe God's not just going to meet your need, because that's what He promises to do. But He's going to use you to start meeting others' needs around you. Start laying hands on that coworker. Start believing some radical faith for somebody to be healed. Start getting them healed up physically, spiritually, emotionally. Why? Because he said he would. Amen. Yes. And and I, you want to know the truth? I, I believe that's how you build the church. Because that's the point of building the church is to make disciples and raise people up, and then they can even deal with a crazy hillbilly like me. Because they're more worried about learning what the Word of God has to say and what Jesus has to say about their issues than how I'm going to make them feel good next week or how I offended them by not doing such and such. Because listen, if you wait for me to offend you, it won't take you very long. Not because I'm purposely doing it, but it's just how God made me. I can usually do it pretty quick. I'll, I'll find something that rubs you the wrong way pretty soon. I'll preach on but nothing else. I'll say, say something on money, you know, or something. But they, and did it say they, they might recover? They will. Now, did the Apostle Paul have anything wrong with him? Well, he, when he came to one church, he said, you all didn't hold my affliction against me when I came and preached to you. You still received my revelation. Kind of like with you all, even though Pastor, you know, Sometimes during worship, I don't stand on. You haven't held my affliction against me. It hasn't stopped you from receiving the anointing that God's placed on my life. Now, what if the apostle? Now he's he's seen tons of healings and salvations and majesty. I, I believe it's during that very same time that he raised somebody from the dead. Now, listen, he wasn't all about show and atmosphere. His preaching caused somebody to fall asleep, and then he had to go down. The man fell out the window, and he went down and prayed and raised him from the dead. You know, and every time I start thinking, the Lord, they're falling asleep on me, he said, you're in good company. They did with Paul too. So, but Paul dealt with some things. Some physical issues. What if the, this is one of the apostles. What if he let that stop him from ministering to people? But do you notice God more than met him everywhere along the way? I want to encourage you, church, that if you'll break out in some things, maybe you need some healing with some issues. The enemy always wants to work in inclusion, and God always wants to work in us sharing our faith. There's some a fancy way to say it, but I, and as you step out in that, I really believe God's going to meet you. Are, are you with me? Now? Are you hearing me? And you'll say, "Well, I have been. I just got tired." Good, you're in good company. We can see that all through the Word of God too. But listen, we, He promises if we'll do this, He'll go with us and He'll send us with power. And any demonic force that comes against us is going to turn tail and run because He gave us power over every single one of them. I want to say it. He gave us power over every single one of them. Come on, I'm going to say it again. Some of you, He gave us power over every single one of them. And they don't want you to realize it. 
They don't want you. Listen, he to mighty to pull him down strongholds. I mean, I preach some great messages. Some of you got a hold of it, and for most of you here, it's probably operated in a time or two. But I believe God wants it to become a lifestyle. Mighty to pulling down strongholds, taking authority of principalities and powers. There's principalities and powers that are wreaking havoc on this country right now. And as men and women of God, we should be able to stand in the gap. He gave us all power. But you know what? It ain't going to be us sharing our, our opinions. It's going to be us sharing our faith. It isn't going to be because I don't like this one, I don't like that one. And I may personally not like them. But the big scope of things, it doesn't matter to a hell of beans. It matters what the Word of God has to say. It matters what Jesus is in me and what He wants to do through me. And sharing my faith with others. And discipling them. You know what? You know what the, the probably the biggest group of people I won to the Lord was one of the most hardest times. Well, it's more than once actually. I was at one of the jobs at the mines, and I was persecuted. I mean, I had people burning me, beating on me. I had I had supposed men of God that came up to me and they said, "Hey, preacher, hey, pastor, you know you ain't gonna take that. You've already turned the other cheek. We know who you used to be. Would you just knock that guy out?" I said, "No, I'm not gonna do that." God's going to deal with him. God's going to deal with him. And that was the one that I told you all that I went home and he'd done all the stuff. And I told God on the way home that night that that's it. 